Game of Thrones, the board game, three to six players take on the roles of the great houses of Westeros. By mastering armies, conquering territories and forming alliances, each house strives to claim the Iron Throne. In this four-player example, House Baratheon, House Lannister, House Greyjoy and House Stark gather their cards, tokens and units and place them on the board according to the information printed on their player screens. Next, each house places its victory, supply and influence tokens on the tracks found on the game board. Gameplay begins with the planning phase. During this step, each player must place one order token face down on each area containing one of his units. Units consist of footmen, knights, ships and siege engines. There are five different types of order tokens that a player can use. March, Defense, Support, Raid and Consolidate Power. Some orders have modifiers that affect the combat strength of units on the battlefield while other, more powerful orders are marked with a star icon. These special orders are stronger variants of each order type. The number of special orders a player may place during the planning phase is determined by his position on the King's Court influence track. March orders represent the movement of troops and ships across the lands and seas of Westeros. Only by assigning march orders to units on the game board can players take control of new areas and engage opponents in combat. Defense orders represent the preparation of strong defensive positions. They grant a combat strength bonus to the defender of the assigned area. Support orders represent martial assistance to combat in an adjacent area. A player may not only grant support to his own adjacent units, but to adjacent units controlled by other players. This makes the support order the fulcrum of intrigue and negotiation in a Game of Thrones, the board game. Consolidate power orders represent the garnering of local favor, the collection of income tax, and the harvesting of resources from areas under a player's control. Raid orders represent aggressive incursions and pillaging of enemy lands. They are used to remove adjacent enemy support, consolidate power and raid orders. After all orders have been placed, they are simultaneously revealed for the action phase. Since he holds the highest position on the King's Court influence track, the Lannister player controls the Messenger Raven token. He may use the Messenger Raven's power to either exchange one of his assigned orders with one of his remaining orders, or to look at the top card of the Wildling deck. Seeing that House Greyjoy has placed a support order in Ironman's Bay, House Lannister decides to use the power of the Messenger Raven to exchange his defense order in the Golden Sound with an unused raid order. After the special power of the Messenger Raven has been used, gameplay proceeds to order resolution. Raid orders are resolved first, one order at a time, following the sequential house positions on the Iron Throne influence track. Lannister, the only house to issue a raid order this round, resolves its raid at the Golden Sound. In doing so, it may choose to remove any adjacent enemy support, consolidate power or raid orders. Lannister removes Greyjoy's support order located at Iron Man's Bay. Next, march orders are resolved, one order at a time following the sequential house positions on the Iron Throne influence track. House Baratheon, in the first position on the Iron Throne track, is first to resolve a march order. Baratheon has two march orders, one at Shipbreaker Bay and one at Dragonstone. The Baratheon player chooses to resolve the march order at Shipbreaker Bay and moves one of his ship units from Shipbreaker Bay to Blackwater Bay. House Lannister is next. Lannister has two march orders, one at Stony Sept and one at Lannisport. The Lannister player 
chooses to resolve his order at Stony Sept, using it to move a footman unit to Heronhall. Lannister's decision to move his footman unit out of Stony Sept would leave it unoccupied. However, each house begins with a supply of power tokens. Power tokens are used for bidding and to establish control of game board areas. Before leaving Stony Sept, Lannister elects to establish control by placing a power token here. In this way, Lannister retains control of Stony Sept even after the last Lannister units leaves. As the Lannister Footman unit has taken control of Heronhall and its castle, the Lannister player moves his house token one step up on the victory track to indicate he now controls a total of two strongholds and castles. Stark is next on the Iron Throne influence track and resolves his march order at Winterfell to move its knight unit to Moat Kaelin. Taking control of Moat Kaelin's castle, House Stark immediately advances one space on the victory track. Greyjoy resolves its march order in Pike's Harbour by moving a ship out of the harbour and into Iron Man's Bay. Every player has now had the opportunity to resolve a single march order. However, play continues in this fashion until all march orders have been resolved. House Baratheon resolves its remaining march order at Dragonstone by moving a knight to the Kingswood. This is possible because a Baratheon ship unit occupies the adjoining Shipbreaker Bay sea area, forming a bridge between the Dragonstone and the Kingswood land areas by ship transport. House Lannister resolves its second march order and moves a knight from Lannisport to River Run. Gaining the stronghold at River Run, House Lannister immediately advances to the third space on the victory track. House Stark's final march order moves his ship in the Shivering Sea to the Narrow Sea. Greyjoy marches a footman unit from Greywater Watch to Moat Kaelin, leaving a power token on Greywater Watch to establish control there. However, Moat Kaelin contains one of House Stark's night units, resulting in combat between House Greyjoy and House Stark. When a player marches one or more of his units into an area containing enemy units, combat ensues immediately and must be resolved before play proceeds to the next march order. In this example, House Greyjoy has marched a footman unit from Greywater Watch to Moat Kaelin, containing a Stark Knight unit. The battle begins by the two opponents calling for support from adjacent areas. Only House Stark has an adjacent support order in White Harbor. Areas with support orders may support any number of adjacent combats during a game round and may even support the forces of other players engaged in an adjacent combat. In this case, House Stark's footman in White Harbor lends its support in the adjacent Moat Kaelin. Now, each side calculates the total combat strength value of its units involved in the combat. Each unit type contributes a specific amount of combat strength in combat. Footman and ship units contribute one combat strength while a knight unit contributes two combat strength. Siege engine units contribute four combat strength when attacking an area containing a castle or stronghold. But siege engines have no combat strength when defending or when attacking an area without a castle or stronghold. In this example, Greyjoy's footman unit with a combat strength value of one challenges Stark's knight unit with a combat strength value of two supported by a Stark footman in White Harbor with a combat strength value of 1. Greyjoy, as the attacker, also includes the combat strength value on his march order, in this case, 0. A defense order in the embattled area would add its combat strength to the defending units. In this case, however, there is no defense order in Moat Kaelin. Both houses now choose and reveal one house card. House cards represent characters lending their abilities and strength to combat. Stark reveals Eddard Stark, who has a combat strength value of 4 and 2 sword icons, which, if Eddard is victorious, will destroy two of Greyjoy's units in the combat. 
Greyjoy reveals Balin Greyjoy, who has a combat strength value of 2, and an ability that reads, The printed combat strength of your opponent's house card is reduced to 0. Text abilities are immediately resolved. Holding the highest position on the fiefdom influence track, Greyjoy controls the Valerian Steel Blade. This token may add one combat strength to a combat once per game round. Greyjoy decides to use the Valerian Steel Blade. The final combat strength for House Greyjoy is four. One for the Footman, two for Balin Greyjoy, and one for the Valerian Steel Blade. The final combat strength of House Stark is three, two for the Defending Knight, and one for the Supporting Footman in White Harbor. As Eddard Stark's combat strength was reduced to zero by Bailing Greyjoy's text ability, he contributes no strength to the combat. Greyjoy wins the battle four to three, and Stark's knight must retreat to an adjacent, empty or friendly area. After retreating, the unit is laid on its side. It becomes routed and can no longer provide combat strength this turn. Stark loses the castle at Mukkalin, and moves down one space on the victory track. Greyjoy, gaining the castle, moves one space up. The next orders to be resolved are Consolidate Power Orders. Baratheon, first on the Iron Throne track, resolves his Consolidate Power Order in the Kingswood, gaining one power token for the order and one additional power token because the Kingswood area contains a power symbol. House Greyjoy has the only other Consolidate Power Order at Pike and gains two power, one for the Order and one for the Icon printed on Pike. After all Consolidate Power Order tokens have been resolved, Defense and Support Order tokens are removed from the board and routed units are restored. The next game round now begins and the round marker is advanced forward one space. Every round after the first round begins by drawing a card from each of the three Westeros decks, which are then resolved in order. The first Westeros card in this example is Supply, which reads Adjust Supply Track, Reconcile Armies. When resolving the Supply Westeros card, each house in turn order counts the number of supply icons printed on areas it controls and then moves its supply token on the supply track to reflect that level of supply. Baratheon counts two supply. Lannister three, Greyjoy two, and Stark controls only one. A player's position on the supply track determines the number and the size of the armies he may field on the game board. An area containing a single unit does not constitute an army but any group of two or more units in the same area does. If a player loses supply icons throughout the game, a future supply Westeros card may eliminate units from his armies as they are brought into compliance with his lower supply level. The second Westeros card drawn is Clash of Kings, which reads, Bid on the three influence tracks. The Clash of Kings Westeros card simulates the intrigue and plotting taking place behind the curtain of war, affecting it in many subtle and some not so subtle ways. To resolve the Clash of King Westeros card, all influence tokens are first removed from the three influence tracks. The players will bid for positions on the tracks, starting with the Iron Throne track. Each player bids a secret number of his available power tokens, concealing the selected number in a closed fist. After all players have chosen, bids are revealed simultaneously. In this example, Baratheon bids 3, Lannister bids 0, Stark bids 3, and Greyjoy bids 2 power tokens. The house with the highest bid takes the first position on the Iron Throne track. Ties are broken by the house that currently holds the Iron Throne Dominance token, in this case House Baratheon. House Baratheon chooses himself for the first position and Stark for the second position. House Greyjoy, having bid third most, is placed in the third highest position, leaving House Lannister 
in the fourth position. After all positions have been determined on the Iron Throne influence track, the Iron Throne dominance token is awarded to the house on the track's first position. In this case, House Baratheon retains control of the Iron Throne dominance token. Next, bidding on the fiefdom influence track commences. Greyjoy wins first position with a bid of three. Lannister wins second position with two. Stark takes third position with a bid of one and Baratheon last with a bid of zero. After all final positions have been determined on the fiefdom influence track, the Valerian Steel Blade Dominance Token is awarded to the House on the track's first position. In this case, House Greyjoy retains control of the Valerian Steel Blade Dominance Token. Finally, the bid for the King's Court Influence track is resolved. This reveals a Baratheon bid of 3, a Lannister bid of 2, a Stark bid of 1, and a Greyjoy bid of 1. Baratheon moves to the first position on the King's Court track and Lannister the second. Then House Baratheon, controlling the Iron Throne token, breaks the tie between Greyjoy's and Stark's bids by placing Stark in the third position and Greyjoy in the fourth position. After all positions have been determined on the King's Court track, the Messenger Raven Dominance token is awarded to the House on the track's first position. In this case, House Baratheon takes it from House Lannister. With the Clash of Kings card resolved, play continues to the third and final Westeros card, entitled Wildlings Attack, which reads, The Wildlings Attack Westeros. In the icy north, an army of barbaric wildlings gather to descend upon the continent of Westeros. The ancient order of the Night's Watch protects the massive wall that defends against these dangers. Yet the strength of the Night's Watch will fail without the support of the Great Houses. Some cards in the Westeros decks are marked with a wildling icon. For each such icon, the wildling threat token is advanced one space on the wildling track. When the track reaches 12 or a Wildlings Attack Westeros card is drawn, players must resolve a Wildling Attack by collectively bidding power tokens against the threat illustrated by the Wildling track. In this example, the Wildling threat level is 2, representing the amount of power the houses must collectively match if they wish to stave off the Wildling threat. To do so, each player bids against the Wildling track by selecting and holding a secret number of his available power tokens in his closed fist. The combined number of bid power tokens is the Knight's Watch strength and is compared to the Wildling strength. In this example, all players bid zero as most had spent all their power in previous phases. With a Wildling strength of two against a Knight's Watch strength of zero, it is a Wildling victory. The threat token is moved back two positions, to a minimum of zero, and any bid power tokens are discarded. Next, the top card of the Wildling deck is revealed and shows a Mammoth Riders card. The Wildling victory section on the card reads, Lowest bidder destroys three of his units anywhere. Everyone else destroys two of their units anywhere. Since each house bid the same amount, it is up to House Baratheon, the holder of the Iron Throne Dominance token, to break the tie and determine who will be the lowest bidder. After resolving the Wildlings attack card, the Westeros phase for this game round has been completed. Play now proceeds to the planning phase. After 10 game rounds, the house that controls the most areas containing castles and strongholds is declared the winner. If, however, at any time during the game, a player controls seven such areas, that player immediately wins the game. To conquer the great tracks of Westeros required to seize the Iron Throne, players will want to enlarge and expand their martial forces. The principal way for players to recruit new units to the game board is during the resolution of a mustering Westeros card during the Westeros phase. 
When a Mastering Westeros card is resolved, each player in turn order may recruit or upgrade units in each area he controls containing a stronghold or a castle. Each castle provides one mustering point, while strongholds provide two mustering points. When mustering, a footman or a ship unit costs one mustering point, while a knight or a siege engine unit costs two mustering points. Alternatively, a player may upgrade an existing footman unit to either a knight or a siege engine unit for a cost of one mustering point. A player may never muster a unit that would cause the number or size of his armies to exceed his supply limit as illustrated on the supply track on the game board. In this example, it is House Lannister's turn to muster units during the resolution of a mustering Westeros card. Lannisport contains a stronghold which provides two mustering points. The Lannister player begins by upgrading the footman unit here to a knight unit at the cost of one mustering point. He then uses Lannisport's remaining mustering point to place a new ship unit in the Golden Sound. Ship units cannot be mustered on a land area, but must instead be placed in a friendly or empty adjacent sea area or port. As the Golden Sound already contained an existing Lannister ship unit, this area is now considered an army of two units, taking one of the two army slots of Lannister's supply. At an overall supply level of three, House Lannister may field three armies of two units each, and one army of three units. The Lannister player then musters units in River Run, also a stronghold, providing two mustering points. He uses his first mustering point to place a new footman unit in River Run, and the second mustering point to place a new ship unit in the adjacent Golden Sound Sea area. In joining the already existing two ship units in the Golden Sound, the new ship unit from River Run forms an army of three units in the Golden Sound. This is a legal placement, as Lannister's supply level allows him to field one army containing three units. Lannister's final mustering area is Hall, which provides one mustering point. Lannister spends this point by placing an additional footman unit here, forming an army of two units. House Lannister has now concluded its mustering. In order of the Iron Throne influence track, the next house now resolves its mustering. This continues until all houses have mustered units on the game board. Will you take power through force? Use honeyed words to coerce your way onto the throne. Through strategic planning, masterful diplomacy and clever card play, spread your influence over Westeros.